We're told that after the war the Nazis vanished without a trace But the Italians are fascists still dream of a master race The history books they tell of their defeat in 45 But they all came out of the woodwork on the day the Nazi died They say the prisoner of Spandau was a symbol of defeat Enough of that, silly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dick Coughlin, and uh, a couple of days ago I did a video on conspiracy theories, and uh, I'm a little bit, I'm getting a bit paranoid, if you know, if you might, you might have noticed this, I've been a, I'm a little bit on edge, you know, you might have noticed this, I'm a bit, you know, I might come across as a guy who's very sort of got his head on straight, calm, rational, cold-blooded, a psychopath, but, no, I'm very, um, I'm shitting myself constantly, in fact, I've got a funny feeling right now, between you and me, I think I'm being recorded by someone. Someone is filming this. And I don't know who it is, but my God. Why I'm suspicious? Because I made that video on conspiracy theories. And do you know what happened? Something weird happened. Normally, you make a video on conspiracy theories. You only need to, you know, you could make a video and you just, you just have to say the words 9-11. Yeah? You just have to say it. You just have to sit there and... You know, use those. You have to say things like jet fuel can't melt steel beams, or you know, fucking. Oh, you know, no, no. The guy didn't take an insurance policy out the fucking day before. No, all the Jews were not told not to go in, and the ones who did were not given parachutes so they could jump out of the building safely. Right? They're, all of these things you have to. T but no, none of them. There were three truthers who turned up. All of them the same bloke on a fucking sock account. Why is it that these conspiracy theorists, the, the more conspiracy theorists sort of, fun, you know, sort of extreme they are, the more they're sort of deep, the more they act like a devious under, they're all up to something, see? It's all projection, isn't it? Even projection is projection. Yeah. But you see, I was sitting around discussing this, because I, I was having a bit of fun, because I was sitting here discussing it with a friend of mine, and let's call this friend my, yeah, and, uh, that is not an easy book for a white person to order, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Because, uh, yeah, because I can't, I, I can't say it, you know? I can't say it. Well, obviously I did. I mean, I'm a, I, I liked causing, I, I was causing a scene. I was there with a, ringing a bell going, I want this book! And I didn't need to, you know? This is a book, despite how short it is, it's a very short book, you know, which I think is kind of ironic, really, it's quite small. Uh, but the, um, yeah, it's not very long, um, but here... Uh, the, the, the ironic thing is, is it took me, a, took me about six months to read, and the reason for it is I made a rule when I bought this book, I'm, oh, and the rule was this. I can read this book, but I can only read it whilst I'm sat on public transport. You know, the more crowded, the better. Right? So London Underground, buses, tubes, taxis, you know. Some, once I got a train from, like, you know, from my hometown, like ten minutes down the road, just so I could finish reading it, because I was two pages from the bloody end. I wanted to see who, who, who the killer was, but, um, you know, and it was an OJ, but um, yeah, it's an interesting book, and uh, like I said, nowadays, now with the fact that, because, of, because apparently I can't say that word, because apparently if I simply say it, then it immediately increases racism tension, racial tensions around the world increase exactly by 0 0.2 decimeters and uh, but 15 cubic hectares of racism is uh, thrown onto the pile if I simply say that word. And um, I never knew. So apparently, um, <laughs> yeah, the book is about you know about that word. It's about that word and uh, and about its history, where it comes from, and you know what it means. In um, and obviously in America, because uh, people don't fucking really use it. But it's it's a very good book. I do recommend it. Um, uh, and uh, I also like the fact that the guy who wrote it, it's a, it's, a, it's a book called that, it's written by a black guy who's a lawyer, so it's obviously, obviously I'm a, you know, I don't know who his name is, I think it's Theodore Huxtable, but he, um, he's grown up to be a very, very respectable young man, it was not hard if you compare him to his dad, but he, uh, he wrote that, and he has the same view I do on, you know, he says that, you know, he says that he doesn't think, he says he thinks that when people refuse to say any word under any context, then they're a missing the point of words, and b they're giving words that you know are you know are only dangerous when they're given power. They're giving more power to words that are harmful. Yeah, that's that's what he said, and and he is black. Right. So yeah, and uh, but really, this video uh, is a, is going to be a, a video. I'm going to try and do the video I did 
before the new year. I'm not going to do the same video, I'm going to try a different one. Because I did a video that was an hour and 20 minutes long, and it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be like a sort of 10 minute, just rambly sort of, thank you, happy new year, for God's sake, don't kill each other. Um, you know, and because uh, last year I lost two subscribers through the act of, what, what? I lost one subscriber through suicide and another one because um, they got murdered. So, I, you know, I just, I want you guys to look after yourselves because I need fucking views, bitch. Now, and, uh, and I hate it when, I hate it when a friend of mine, I've had eight friends commit suicide in the last ten years. And that's it, and it's a pisser when they're on the internet because you've lost a friend you know, and and a fucking you know, and an extra view, and possibly someone you can scrounge twenty quid off. You know, <clears throat> always make sure when your friends die, you owe them money. Then now, and so yeah, so uh, 2018 has got off to a bit of a bit of a fucking. I say it was a it was a weird start. You know, it's got off to a slightly dodgy. Do it, it, it's it's not what to make. Now, first of all. At the end of last year, early December, I think it was around, actually it was about mid-December, I was back home in Faversham, paying tribute to, you know, the, the, it was, you know, I just had to get, I had to go there, back there for the, um, for, for the mission, and I, when I was down there, I experienced something that I had avoided at all costs. You see, there are certain people who, uh, whose names I'm aware of, but I don't know anything about them and I avoid ever trying to find out. Because you only ever hear their names brought up in, in general conversation when, because they tend to be people who say horrible shit. You know, a good example of this would be Lena Dunham. Uh, I have no idea who she is. Uh, absolutely no idea, but I only ever hear, hear her name when it's followed with, you know, this spewing shit fountain thunder cunt or something like that, you know. It's, and she said something horrific, you know. Probably, you know, and I don't know what her job is. I mean, is she an actress or something? It's like, I mean, it's always a worry. It's always a worry for me when you're meant to be an artist of some other description, like of a skill, a talent, or a specific nature. And the only time you're ever, you know, no anyone's ever talking about you is because you've said something stupid or insane. Um, another one. I mean, Azealia, Azealia Banks. Uh, Azealia Banks. That woman was. What, I mean, I didn't even know she was a. She was a rapper. I spent fucking years like knowing who she was, because she was like, she, you know, because she had a stick up our ass about you know uh, <laughs> about certain things and certain issues, which is fine. But she used to have a pro she had a problem with the uh, with the that Australian blonde rapper um, um, Ziggy Azealia. First of all, she claimed that she stole her name because obviously, you know, um, it, I, I would have stolen Azealia Banks's name had I known. Because we're all trying to get off, we're all trying to go through life, and it's good if we can try and get some of that Azealia Banks magic to rub off on us and on our, and just ease us, grease us up on our ride down the tube of fucking fame and fortune. Yeah, and and one of the things apparently uh, Ziggy Azealia, who I know nothing about other than the fact that I would do things to her ass that I wouldn't do to a barn animal, they. She apparently, in one of her rap songs, said the said she, she said uh, she said that word, right? And uh, the, because she said that word, Azealia Banks kicked off. Now that's fine, right? I ain't got a problem with that. If that's her problem, but then she has she, again. She has the thing where she doesn't like anyone saying it ever under any circumstances, particularly white people. And I'm fine. I can live with that because guess what? I don't agree with it. But here's the thing: some people. Don't, Ice Cube said it. Ice Cube said it on the Bill Maher show. He said he doesn't like it at all when any of his white friends ever invoke that word. Now I can understand that. Now, first of all, if Ice Cube was um, was next to me, I would refrain from talking in general, just in the off chance that I accidentally said something, some horrific racial slur, out of sheer like, just out of nervous fucking terror. You know, when you try so hard to say not say the wrong thing that you end up saying the worst thing, right? So. I can understand that, right? And also, white people do moan about it, but I always say to them, what exactly do you do in your day-to-day -day life? What, how, is, how is your life? Let's say it was illegal for you to ever say it, for you to ever say that word. Is that honestly going to cause you a great deal of... I mean, what job do you have? What is your day-to-day -day routine? What happens throughout your life with such frequency that it requires you to say that word? And... That's, you know, I mean, it's not like you're being banned from using pronouns or, you know, you can't use words with more than one consonant. I mean, no, you just, like, but you're not banned from saying it, okay? So, that's not even the issue. But, 
The thing is, like, yeah, so if you've got these people who turn up. My point is that, back to the thing. So, uh, and who is it in, and one of these other people that always turns up, and I, I never hear anything good, is this, it's just this, this, this dodgy, you know, just fucking, he, he, he looks like a cartoon caricature of the worst kind of fucking, you know, of like, oh, I, oh, I make with his vest and he's fucking like, he's trying to be, he's like, macho, trendy, frat boy, jock, wanker, um, who thinks he's God's gift to fucking everything, you know that, and it's a guy called Jake Paul. Again, I didn't know anything about Jake Paul. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. And I, le I left it at that because I realised he's, you know, he's in his early 20s. He used to work for Disney. And he, he makes... Uh, well, I'll get on to that. But you know, he's, he's trying to forge a career as a uh, YouTuber. And he's done very well. Um, he's, uh, he's done very well. He is proof that... you know I mean, 15 million subscribers, I think it is. No, proof that YouTube is a meritocracy. And, um, yeah. More like a fucking crash. But yeah, Jake Paul. Now, I subjected myself to back in December. I thought I've never listened to this song. He did that. Everyone, the one, it's the one. It's called "It's Every Day, Bro." Now, I don't even like calling it a song. I don't even know what I'm supposed to call it. You know, in terms of like whether or not it is a song. I mean, you know, someone blowing off in the in the woods and following through is more of a song than any of this. The violent, the sort of desperate screams in the night of a of a tramp who's fallen in a, in a wooded area and broken his leg and can't be a, that is more of a song, right? You know, that is more of a song than this thing, It's Every Day Bro. I, I wished I'd recorded my, my first reaction because I watched it and I thought, and I was in absolute, I was just, I can't even begin, I was just absolutely stunned that this, that this got made. That he made, this. he wrote this down. He wrote those words down in that order, right? He got that tune together, which he probably just put. He probably just one of those. He's got some fancy machine that he presses a button and it makes something for him, and he gets to get fucking royalties on it, right? But then he does that, and then he learns this song. Apparently, this song took him ninety minutes. I don't believe that. This song did not take ninety. I could have, sh I could have written that by accident with one of my turds, right? On just dropping it off a building, it would splatter and make fucking more poetic and meaningful language. But, but I'm listening to it, and it is objectively, I don't care what you say, it's everyday bro, is objectively the worst fucking thing ever produced by humanity. Right? And I mean that, no hyperbole. I cannot, it is so bad that in the month since I watched it, I can't stop thinking about it. Every time, any opportunity that it pops into my head, I get angry. Because it's got no, it's just dreadful on every single, it's not even, and it's the worst kind of shit song. It's not like, it ain't like The Room, or which is so good it's bad and charming. It ain't like fucking Vanilla Ice, or or MC Hammer, or it's, it's not one of those things that's so bad, but it's good bad, you know. It's likeable, it's charming, it's harmless, it's fun. It's shit, but at least it's enjoyable. This is none of those things. Oh, you know, this is this is just. It's got the worst rap lyric that has ever happened. This fat piece of shit. Who? There's three guys who rap in this, and some Mexican geezers, right? And there's three. The three guys who rap, they progressively get. They've got the same look: white skin, blonde, short hair, and they basically. It's like Russian dolls, because you've got Jake Paul, who's like, you know, athletic build, and then his mate joins in, who's like a little bit bigger. A little bit taller, same. And then at the end of it is this guy called Nick Brompton, apparently, and he's just the big end Russian doll. He's a fat cunt who's fan. And they get worse and worse. And he says, he says something, he says some shite, and he goes, My name's Nick Brompton. Yes, I can rap, but no, I'm not from Compton. Really? That's your fucking. <laughs> yes, I can rap, but I'm not from Compton. No, you, you, you not. No, sorry, sorry, Nick. You know, I'm, I see, Nick. I'm what's called a skeptic. I like to have evidence of these wild accusations and claims. Um, I've also it's saying you can rap. Yeah, yeah, you can rap in the same way that. Uh, yeah, in the, 
You can rap in the same way that I can, you know, I can thrash Usain Bolt's record in a, in a, in a, in a fucking hundred meter down. I can do that, you know. You can rap in the same way that I can fucking, I can fly to the moon on, on a giant camel. Right, called Barry, who's dressed up as you know, as as a fucking Romulan, because he's going to a convention, right? And I'm there, like, trying to avoid all the Chinese corpses of the astronauts there. And I'm flying through that, and we land on the moon, where it's very, very nice, and um, and yeah, it's and it's the perfect ethno state, the only white ethno state, the moon. You know that? Because it is. Because think about it, it was like Buzz Aldrin and Neil um, Armstrong. <laughs> You know, the other cunt, what's it for his name was, Lance Armstrong, and Lance Armstrong and uh, BuzzFeed, they're there on the moon. And at that moment, it was the white ethno street. They even played golf. How white is that? And it's the whitest planet. It's all it is, is white. It's just a white planet, no atmosphere, with two white geezers playing golf. It's every country club you've ever been to. Anyway, I didn't know that Jake Paul... Um, who I am going to murder one day. That is my new... The reason I get up in the morning and can be motivated to do anything is the, is the thought, is the fact that one day I know I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my shit together. I'm now, my life is building towards the day when I get to, I'm gonna find Jake Paul and I'm going to murder him. And I'm gonna stream it on Twitch, right? Because there's no more perfect fucking website for me, and I can't use it. There's a website called Twitch, and Dick Coughlin, the geezer with Tourette's syndrome, can't fucking use it because he doesn't play poxy video games because he's 38 years old. Get over it, and he can't fucking fill the pads anymore. So, but no, Jake Paul apparently has another brother called Logan Paul, and Logan Paul is, you know, he's exactly like Jake Paul, except he sounds dumber and he looks more hideous. And it's like, and I'm like, who the fuck were these guys? Who bred? I want, to, I want the man and the woman responsible for these two. Because I don't think they exist. I don't believe it. This is someone, something went wrong. Like, you know, some fucking, like, Fukushima, like, stuff. Tox some crap from Fukushima and blown in from Siberia around where you've got, like, where that Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. All of these fucking meltdowns, like, coerced, right, around a fucking, like, oh, some kind of sewage outflow next to a fucking, next to a Burger King. And all of it melted together. And these two fucking gormless, talentless pricks walk out of it. And Logan, but Logan Paul, um, he started the year off for YouTubers, he gave YouTube the best kind of, uh, you know, he was very popular, I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's never going to get a video monetized ever again in a million billion years, ever. YouTube will not give that guy a penny. But, and YouTube shouldn't really either, because what, uh, what Logan Paul did was he went to Japan. Um, he went to Japan, which is uh, where he like humiliated himself and uh, it was a complete embarrassment to, uh, you know, to as a representative of his country and he you know he went he ran around he ran around the fucking you know country of japan um dressed in a silk kimono with one of those fucking sort of like straw lampshade hats on and he might as well have, he might as well have had his fingers pulling his eyes back with two buck teeth going oh, oh, oh everybody me wagon for you know and um, that's what he should have done because like if you're gonna be a don't fucking try and be cool and fuck wacky don't be in, don't try and be like jackass and then be, be racist at the same time. Don't do it fucking properly, okay? You dress as Batfink, the other one can be Kung Fu. <laughs> and you can just come out, or get, or just get a mate to fucking get on the floor, get a suit on, with his little shoes on, he can just walk around, the plan, boss, the plan, you know, just do that. Give these people some, just, if you're gonna, humi they, they're not, they don't care what you think, they're just like, you know, they still, they're still gloating over the fact that they fucking, uh, they managed to sneak up on you in World War Two, <laughs> and you fucking, you fucking got annihilated, and they went for it. You know, they owned you. Right? <laughs> you had to join a war to fucking, you, know, you had to come and join a war because of them. They fucking, they, they're not fucking bothered by you. So. So yeah, but in the meantime, there's this place called the Suicide Forest in Japan. Now, it's called the Suicide Forest because it's got lots of trees in it. And um, also, apparently, this place is, uh, is well known for people killing themselves. 100 people a year kill themselves in this forest. Now, I don't know whether that's particularly because it's 
a nice place to kill yourself. I don't know whether it's because it happens to be home to the very, very unusual um, uh, noose tree, which just produces these uh, twines of bark. Um, and yeah, I don't know what it is, or maybe it's just the only fucking forest nearby. It's massive, and Japan's got loads of people in it. But yeah, one, so it's one person every like three and a half days. And um, I don't know whether that's the actual fucking like pattern it happens. I don't know if they've got to wait their turn, like they pick a number out of it, like they go to fucking like a meat raffle. But Logan Paul decides to go to the suicide forest with a few of his friends. Now, I'm sure when they, I'm sure when the people of Japan saw him walking in there, they thought, oh, thank God, he finally got it. Oh, he made good decision. No, he's not. He wasn't going to do that. No, he was going in there because he wanted to see if it was haunted. Now, Logan Paul might have, my, Logan Paul might have the intellectual capacity of a, of a, of a, of a, you know, a mouldy McVitie's digestive biscuit that has been subject to a 50-man game of soggy biscuit and has been sat there in a pile for the last month. You know, I, I, I don't care if he's got, and it's got a maggot on it, right? And, uh, and you know, and it's, it's not even a good digest, it's not even a McVitie's one, it's one of those shit ones you get out of the fucking, like, generic stores. It's one of those shitty ones, you know. So, no, he's not going to kill himself. No one was. Nobody was going. This was, this was the biggest, like, because I'm sure everyone would have, now that would have been a video that no one would have fucking moaned about, right? But no, but no, um, so, uh, they're in the suicide forest with, um, with, they're in the suicide forest with, uh, with binoculars and, uh, you know, because you're looking, because during the day you need binoculars to see ghosts because obviously you're not going to see them you know, you're not going to see him with your naked eye, are you? That would be ridiculous. So, particularly a Japanese ghost, they're going to be very cagey because they were ninjas, right? So imagine a ghost and a, and a ninja combined. It would be, it would be completely bollocks, right? So Logan Paul is obviously completely innocently looking for ghosts. You know, this twenty odd year old man going in, and and you never guess what. At one point, he's in there and he comes. He, they stumble across this guy. Well, not, not stumble across him. They they come into view from behind. A guy goes, "Oh man, I I think I see a dead body." And I'm like going, "No, what? Are they? You're kidding. You're you you you've been walking around in broad daylight in the suicide forest in Japan with binoculars, telescopes, with heat seekers, everything. You've got a fucking app that detects dead bodies. It's like a sort of gay version of Grinder. Uh, and you, sorry." Sorry, a zombie version of Grinder. <laughs> a gay version of Grinder would be, would be Grinder, yeah. And um, so yeah, you're going, and you come across a dead body, and you act, and well done, Logan. You th th all of them, they manage to act, almost genuinely surprised, and some of them even managed to suppress the quite obvious joy they had when they were thinking about all those fucking views they were going to get, and oh yes, we're going to be. On. It, you can tell in his mind there was like. There was like he was there with his suit, getting a getting the key to the city from uh, from from you know from anyone. I don't know what it was. It's like he's getting everything. He's getting, Barack Obama's there, stepping down as Logan Paul goes into the White House to become president for life, for making the single greatest YouTube video ever. And he and he's there acting. He's, he's there acting like fucking. He's like Bill S. Preston. He's like going, oh man, it's a dead, it's a dead body, bro. What do, what do we do, man? What do you mean, what do you do? What do you... You, you don't do anything, fucking low. He's dead. He's dead. He's hung from a tree. You should just be... You better fucking hope he's dead. Because can you imagine if that bloke w wasn't fully... Go imagine if he'd only just gone. They'd been coming around the corner. He'd come from the other side. Can you imagine that poor bastard having to stand there? And the last thing he gets to hear as he's... Fucking neck snaps and it's he has to listen to that fucking dribbling baboon's polyp coming out of here. It's talking like talking like this ultra slow, triple lobotomized version of fucking Keanu Reeves. Like, who is who is John Gilgood next to this face? He's like, nah. Oh dude, I feel really bad, bro. And then he stuck and he you know, I mean he was at one point it was he did look a little bit concerned. Like I've seen a dead body. You know, which 
And then he thought, I haven't seen it, but it looks like he's just he looks like he's sleeping. Fuck it, I've got over it now. He managed to sort of he managed to suppress his grief, which thank God, because then he got to do things like take a selfie with it. You know, he was there, they were there doing all of it. He did the ice bucket challenge. You know, they all did they did all of your favourite memes and all of your favourite stuff on you with this dead Japanese guy. Now I know that some people were offended. Now obviously I'm someone who has. Uh, who has failed to kill himself on three separate occasions. So I'm not an expert on suicide, um, but I'm someone who's dabbled in it. And uh, I've got to tell you this, you know, the one person I genuinely feel sorry for is I hope that poor Japanese guy's family never have to see that. But can you imagine this? That guy could have been saved. That Japanese guy, you could have saved his life. Do you know how? Imagine if you told him Imagine if you told that Jack, he says, uh, yeah, I go to a suicide forest and uh, get a snap neck, big and die. Ima imagine if you said, yes, but Wong, listen, Randall, yip, come here, now, Mr. Wong, if you do that, do you know what's going to happen? Like, tomorrow, I've got on good authority, Logan Paul, right, he goes, no, no, Logan Paul, yes, Logan Paul, he and, and three of his fucking underlings, right, Right, so that's three people who are who he has chosen to hang around to make him look good. Right, they are going to go to the suicide forest from the other side, and it's going to be around about the time you're going to go there. And I'm, there is a very good chance that these guys could accidentally stumble upon your body when they come, when they follow it around, when they get their sniffer dogs, you know, to fucking to get you out, you know. So now ask yourself this, you know, you know, I know you want to kill yourself, but do you want to be on a Logan Paul? Do you want to be the dead guy? who had a selfie with Logan Paul. You're not even gonna get to have the joy of knowing that your dead body on camera has led to him having his channel demonetized and being flagged off the internet and fired from the internet and fired from life. In fact, I'm firing you officially, Logan. You are fired from the internet. I've been here long enough, I can do it. I'm, uh, I'm superior to you here. So you are fired from the internet. Um, come, come back in 30 years time, please. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. In fact, don't come back in 30 years' time, just fuck off, right? Okay, and... I mean, the, and people were sitting there going, oh, God, it's so dreadful, and it's like, you should never laugh at suicide. And I'm like, well, I don't go that far. I mean, I would never laugh. I mean, look, if, if, I was walk, you know, if I was walking through the woods and I saw Logan Paul hanging from a tree with a noose and he was dead, you know, okay, no, would I, I wouldn't laugh. I wouldn't find it funny. I mean, not until after my erection had gone down and I fully enjoyed the moment. And I'd be like, oh, this is fucking... Oh yeah, look at you, yeah. look at you. And then I'd go out and get some confetti and I'd stuff it in his mouth and then I'd invite some friends round and we'd, we'd get big iron bars and we'd fucking pinata him everywhere. Right? We would just chug, we would enjoy the moment. I'd find a necrophiliac online, sell his body to him, have him film it and then we'd put that on the internet. Right? Really fucking make fun of it, you know. If you're going to enjoy it. But Logan Paul, fucking, so, and you're thinking right at this stage, is, you know, you think, no one's going to top that, are you? I mean, that is, the internet has peaked already. 2018 is going to be a pretty boring year. It's going to be a pretty, you know, boring year because no one's going to top Logan Paul fucking, you know, jumping around with a fucking, like, reenacting Weekend at Bernie's with some, with some fucking Japanese corpse in the middle of a Japanese wood with his friends all running round... <laughs> His friends all running around like fucking like Mr. Mr. Wu from Benny Hill, right? And then look, then no one's going to top that. And then what happens? Shane Dawson gets accused of paedophilia, and you're like, man, game on, you know? He has. He's been accused of paedophilia. Things have been. You know, there's audio emerged from um, old recordings and podcast, and uh, it doesn't sound good. But then you could do that with anyone, couldn't you? But especially if they were a paedophile. But you've got to give Shane Dawson credit. You know, that is ponage. Oh, yeah, took a selfie. Oh, yeah, look at you. You you accidentally stumbled upon a dead body in the most easiest place to find a dead body, the forest of dead bodies. You know, that are not even just dead bodies. They're hanging in the sky. They're hanging in from the tree. They're the easiest dead bodies to find. And you go in there, and you found it, and you took a picture of them. So, so what? And you laughed about it, because you're Logan Paul, and you don't know how to deal with fucking things, and... Really, because you're a bit emotionally stunted on the part of the fact that your your brain isn't fully developed, right? But Shane Dawson went. People went. Oh, look, no one's going to top Logan. He's got the that is the epic internet drama of the year. And he went right. Watch this. <laughs> Came back two days later. Paedophilia. Right. Now I've got. Now I've got to ask, folks. You know what's next? Who is next? 
What is going to be next? Well, I've got it for you, folks. I've got the ponage of the year that no one's going to hear about, no one's going to fucking talk about, but I've got it. And it's... And the reason it's, I love it is because it's unlike, unlike most ponage I do, or ownage, it's very subtle. And I've had to keep it to myself for a bit. And, uh, and I did it purely out of spite. I, I didn't have to do it. I could have done something else. But a few days into the new year, uh, a YouTube user called Andy Worski, who is, uh, you know, which is a great last name to have if you are a white nationalist, um, Andy Worski... <laughs> Um, was apparently, was announced that he was hosting Richard Spencer on his channel. Um, an honour, I'm sure. Richard Spencer was going to be on his channel, and he wanted to have a left wing, someone from the left to debate, or someone to the left of Richard Spencer, um, to debate him. And, I, and people were putting my name forward, obviously. And I'm, you know, I'm, I don't like live debates. You know, it, and especially live debates, the bigger they are, they're more fucking... They're just about a spectacle. They're, and they don't become about any ideas. They, and they're not even real debates because they degenerate out of control. And then people come into the room and... Yeah, it's, just, it's just like a fucking... It's, a, not, it's not even a... It's barely a conversation at best. And so I don't like them because they're not very productive. But then I thought, you know what, fuck it. Have I got anything better to do at the moment? No. So I thought, fuck it. Why don't I just go? Bollocks, I'll give it a go. Now, I didn't know much about Andy Worski. Um, again, it was a happier time. But, I will, but then... I had a few back and forths with him, right? We were pretending to be civil towards each other, right? And uh, obviously he's slagging me off on the fucking on his feet. Yeah, I've got Coughlin. He's an SJW. Yeah, yeah, Coughlin. I'll spell his name wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm gonna. <laughs> anyway, so Andy was there, and I was, and and he. The, here's what happened. I didn't end up doing the debate. I didn't turn up, right? Because, and I'm glad I didn't bother, right? I'm so glad I didn't bother because it wasn't just Richard Spencer. There was also Sticks Hammer 666, you know, which means, you know, who's the only guy on YouTube who is thin and white enough to make me look healthy. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm Chris Farley next to him. That guy. Then there was um, Millennial Woes, who's not only a white nationalist, but he's a Scottish white nationalist. Wow, yeah. And, and even worst of all, I mean, Andy Worski's there as well. Even worse, at some point, Kevin Logan came in. Kevin Logan, I mean, God. Why don't you just, why don't you just invite, a, why don't you get Logan Paul to bring his dead Japanese friend and they can sit there and, you know, Logan Paul can, can, can bum him in the ear hole, going, what do you think about this? I call, I call him dead, I call him some dead bloke, right? that's what he's saying. Now, here's the thing, folks, I wasn't there. And the reason I wasn't there is because I had a migraine. You see, unfortunately... <laughs> Unfortunately, Andy Worski had let it slip, not to me, but to people who knew. But to, I've, I've got people, mate. I'm like, I'm like one of those bent coppers who's got fucking informants. You have no idea who, who fucking, who works for me out there, right? So I've got people. Anyway, I find out that apparently Sargon of a card is the sort of understudy to me. Let me just say that again. Richard the Dick Coughlin. Dick fucking Coughlin. The fucking, you know, the OG of ranting left wing sweaty white blokes doing, you know, in, doing, you know, endless rambling rants in, in a borderline heroin addict's hovel. Right? That's me. a guy who writes that on his wall. Right? I was being replaced by Sargon of a card. The only thing he beats me in. Right, is biomass, which he's got 16,000% more of. The rest of it, he's going to replace me. You've taken me, debating a white nationalist, and you want Sargon as the fucking... Oh yeah, Sargon's the wingman. Well, great, that's brilliant, that's, that's fu fucking fabulous. And I thought, hold on a minute. Sargon of a card. <laughs> versus Richard Spencer. And Sticks Hammer. And I don't know about you, but I sat there and thought, oh, he's going to get fucked. So I suddenly got a headache and wasn't very well. And Sargon had to take my place. And <laughs> fucking Sargon, mate, well done. You were every single thing. In that debate, you managed to become, you managed to, 
do every single fucking stupid thing that I never would have done. You managed to fucking, you know, you were as, you, you can, in terms of like what I would have done, you were like the fucking negative, you were like a parallel universe version of me, right? That's what you were. There was nothing in there you got right, not even by accident. And it, there's that one minute, there's one point where Richard Spencer, Richard Spencer, Fucking just annihilate you. He's just there. He's just slapping his dick in your face while you. He's and he's clever. He turns his mic up so you can. Yeah, he fucked you. And I sat there. I thought, yeah, he's a white nationalist, but I'm watching Sargon get fucking. I'm watching Sargon of a card have to be the liberal, the lefty, getting battered by fucking a load of a load of miserable white Nazis on the fucking. I'm like brilliant. And that's my fault. You can blame me for that. I fucking did that. I created that clusterfuck by choosing to deliberately not take part because I would have rather, because I, in my opinion, I would rather sit there and watch Sargon just get his absolute ass ripped to shreds by these fucking intellectual, morally fucking, you know, just bankrupt pieces of shit and, and just get humiliated and just left in a corner like a wet chamois. Whilst I'm sat there at home going, I cannot believe, oh, this is cruel, I should have said something. No. Anyway, folks, so, so I think we can all agree, I, I've won that one so far. If it makes you feel any better, I killed a Japanese bloke on the way home. And bummed his kid. Right, so there you go, I've got all three. This is Dick Coffin, ladies and gentlemen. 2018 is going to be a barnstormer, isn't it? Please consider uh, donating to my Patreon. I really want to get to $500 by the end of the month. I know I keep saying that, and saying that isn't going to make it true. But I'm getting close. I'm getting closer and closer. And it's that one hump. And you know what? Dave Rubin earns 40 grand a fucking month on here. So Sam Harris earns 40 grand a fucking month, you know? Andy Worski got about 20 grand in super chat money. You know? There are... <laughs> You know, there are people on here who earn, you know, Chris Reagan, fucking, you know, you know uh, some black dude, well, some black guy, wow, what a fucking imaginative geezer he sounds like. You know, Blair White, fucking, you know, all these people, these fucking absolute, just carbon copied arguments stuffed into a different shaped person, all of them, they're making a fortune on here, and I'm struggling, and that's not fair, because I'm brilliant, and you know it. So, just get me up to 500, 550, 600, just get me there. I don't need 40 grand a month. Yeah. This, this definitely ain't worth it. But listen, please consider doing that, folks, because I, I just need to have a go. I need to get, I'm going to be doing, trying to do a few videos this week. Might have to try and do a bit more, because I want to pump up more, more material. I don't just want to do like, a couple of videos a month. And by the way, the podcast will be coming along soon. Podcast will be coming along back soon. I just need to have a break. Re, sort of like I need to reboot it, you know, and because uh, it was obviously such a smooth, it, need, it needs to be respected. The old version, it was so smooth and professional. Right. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, this has been that guy there. You've been watching, which means you are the luckiest people ever. <laughs>